I want you to tell me about your work, Journey of Humanity. Officially named the world's largest painting yeah. on canvas. Tell me about the process. It's crazy when I look back at it, because at the time I didn't really think about what I was doing, and it's lucky I didn't. And I had no intention of a world record. I had no intention of Guinness. I was like, it's the furthest thing from my mind, right? I was just like, I want to paint, and I think there's something up there I can borrow that's going to mean something and do something. I laid out a canvas, started, didn't know what I was doing, no clue. But I, I just thought something will come. But I was just pushing paint around, that was it. And then the canvas got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it got quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. So it told this beautiful story of humanity. And it sold for $62 million. Yeah. The second most expensive painting to ever have been sold in auction by a living artist. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Um, wow, OK. I guess I don't really engage with those things, but I think, I guess, the only way I can answer that in a succinct way is um, something I think, I guess, that I realised along this journey, which is artists get it very wrong. They concentrate on the finished product and what the finished product will look like. Or, if they're a bit more advanced, they'll concentrate on the process of creation, the journey, and then the finished product will come. But a lot of them will concentrate on the finished product, the marketing, how I'm going to sell it, where I'm going to sell it, who I'm going to sell it to, and even how much I'm going to sell it for, before they've even started the journey. And others will concentrate on the journey and the process of creation, and that's a bit better. But all of that's wrong as an artist. You shouldn't concentrate on any of that. And I think, as an artist, you focus on how you live your life, and then every now and then, you will borrow a moment. And that moment, you will borrow, you will say thank you, and something magical will happen. And then you give that moment back with grace and gratitude, and you say thank you, and you give it back. If you do that, these moments keep coming. So I think that's sort of how I feel about that painting. I don't feel I created it. I feel I surrendered, and I borrowed a moment, and that's it. Sasha, you've raised over $140 million for charities around the world from the sale of your art. Is that what you're thinking about when you're creating it? No. Um, but, but sometimes, yes, <laughs> which is not good. Um, no, in, in the, the beginning of my journey, definitely not. I was um, very much just trying to surrender, borrow something, something happens, and then if something amazing happens that can then help humanity, that was great, and that was a bonus. But it's a lot of money to give away. Where do you think that passion to make a difference came from? Was it from early on? I think it's... Um, firstly, I don't see it as money I'm giving away. Until later, when people go, my God, you just raised this amount of money and you gave it away. Um, I don't really see it like that. Leading up to the journey of humanity, I always used to criticise other artists and say, I'm an artist and I'm so lucky that I can create something from nothing and give it value. So the intrinsic value is so low, canvas, paint, it's nothing. And yet I can turn it into something that is valuable, that someone buys that for a lot of money. And I'm like, I have a duty to be giving back to humanity with that because I'm so lucky that I can create this but it doesn't feel right if I'm not using some of that opportunity to help others. And I was quite sort of outspoken about, I find it so weird that other artists are not doing the same, that auction houses aren't doing the same, that galleries aren't doing the same. And what's weird, you may have noticed, in the last six months, every artist around the world is doing charitable projects. Every auction house, every gallery. They've realised that they, if they don't adapt, they become irrelevant, they become unpoignant, and people don't connect to what they're doing. And I feel that I may have been a small part of that change, that catalyst for change, and it's now snowballed, where every artist in the world is engaging in a charitable endeavour. Um, and it's become the new norm, the new model moving forward. And that's really cool, you know? That's cool.